Brady, we've come to Lions Farm here today to see your operation. Uh, you're the farm manager here. Could you give us a bit of background to the setup? I am indeed, Bertie, and you're all very welcome here today. So I'm the farm manager here in UCD Lions Farm. Um, it's a 250 hectare farm here on the edge of Dublin Kildare border. Uh, and we're here to support the teaching and research activities of the university. So we have 200 milking dairy cows, 360 breeding yews. We've got up to 600 beef cattle, we've got pigs, we've got tillage, we've got goats, and we've got horses. So we've got a wide range of stuff okay. going on here. Yeah, and you've the direct link then with the college inside. And Absolutely, we're all yeah. part of UCD. The university owns the, has invested in the farm here over the years, and we're here to support the, the teaching and research in agriculture in Bethany. Very good. And I suppose we're here today to talk about precision agriculture. Absolutely. And the role that it has, say, in modern farming now. Um, could you maybe explain the journey you've Yeah, look, we're, we're, we're probably... We started off with just a basic EZ250 Easy Guide uh, in light indicator, and that was working fine. The lads were doing a great job with the accuracy uh, of spreading, but it was saving a lot of time. And then we said, look, we might upgrade slightly. So about five years ago, we started looking at this, and we said, rather than just going up with one step, where could we go and where would we be in a number of years? So we upgraded our um, GPS system. We improved our accuracy there. Uh, we decided to go for a separate gps system a, a, the trimble system that meant that depending on what no matter what machine we had to buy the lads only had to and every the operator only had to know one one control system we felt that would be easier and um, in conjunction with that we also looked at software so the software side of it uh, the record keeping especially here on the university farm and um, for the research trials and the information they're looking for that we have a good software side to back that up so when we Looked at all of that, we made our selection, we went with it, and then that had knock-on effects in terms of our machinery replacement policy. We were looking at tractors then that had ISOBUS capability, so we could link in the system through that. And then also looking at the various pieces of equipment that we have purchased. So I know behind us here, we have the, the slurry tanker, which is our most recent um, machine to be added to the, to, the, to, the, to the system here. But we also have a, a section controlled fertilizer spreader and section control sprayer that have also all been added in the last number of years and they all feed on into that and also some of the tractors as you can see are new here and again they've as we as we were replacing those depending on where they fit in the fleet we've looked for eyes of us compatibility there as well okay and i suppose what partly the reason we're doing the video here today is maybe for farmers to, to explain to them the relevance of it i think there's a, there's a lot mentioned about precision precision agriculture yep i don't think maybe fully maybe some people don't fully understand its role and like say for you and your farm here do you see it playing a, playing a big role going ahead massive um i look we all know we have a we have a, a requirement for record keeping and, and keeping of records and, and very important to keep those records but also in terms of the the, the more sustainable and, and accurate use of the inputs that were coming on be it our fertilizers be it our sprays be it the, the the nutrients involved in the slurries as we recycle those back onto the soil and give us much more accuracy on on those but also for us um, labour, everyone is aware of the, 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 the difficulties in attracting labour and attracting good skilled labour and if we can go with some of these technologies we can get the, the, the machine will take over certain controls or, or cer operate certain functions and it means then that the operator can be more focused on the, you know, the managing of the machine and, and making sure things go and still deliver the accuracy that, okay. we're, that we're looking for and also a time saving, right. you know, big, yeah. big, 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 big advantage there yeah. too. So as you said, we'll we'll do um, we might have a look so at your tank here. Yep. We'll also be looking at your fertilizer spreader. Yep. And your sprayer. Absolutely. So we have Kendrick here today, one of our uh, sub service engineers with Vantage. Yep. And we'll have a maybe just have a look at the various aspects of this tank. Yep. And maybe you could explain what this tank will do different to what previous tanks would have done for you. Okay. Yeah. Um. So the tank. Um. As you can see, it's a it's an Abbey tank. It's a an old money three thousand gallons. So it's thirteen thousand six hundred liters. Um, this replaces two splash plate tanks so obviously we've gone for a trailing shoe applicator on the rear which obviously in the low emission slurry spreading will have a, a much greater benefit there in relation to the retention of the nutrients in the on the slurries that we apply but that side i suppose is is, is one side of the tanker where we've gone for what really i suppose for us has been is that, that this is an isobus compatible tanker and we have full flow and rate control Right. on this tanker. Could we go and see Saudi Ice Bus connection there and stuff yep, like that and absolutely. start from there? Yep. Okay, so 
I don't know if you can see there, but coming into the back of the tanker. So this is our eyes of us connection here. So essentially we have all the brains for the uh, tanker are contained inside in this black box here. And that's all the, the, um, the controls for the various rating of the hydraulics and the, 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 the brains of it linked up straight through to the eyes of us and then into the machine and into the screen where all the functions of the, the tanker are controlled through the touch screen in the, in the cab. Um, it is also meant because of that we have um, load sensing uh, hydraulics on it so only three hydraulic pipes are required and we, we basically work away from there. So inside in the cab then we would have a screen which would control all the functions of the tanker from the raising and lowering of the uh, applicator on the back, the steering axle, um, the opening of the various gate valves, the flow control, uh, the changeover for the fill. We do have PTO driven pump and um, ideally we would like to have had uh, a hydraulic driv drive there from a safety point of view but just for the oil flow required it just, it just wasn't, wasn't feasible in this, this scenario. So then when we do get into the field, drop down our, 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 um, our applicator and we commence operations, I suppose the next big thing that this tanker can do that we haven't is the flow and rate control. So essentially, this unit here is a flow and rate control unit. The first lollipop gate valve here will open and that just opens fully and allows the slurry to be discharged from the tanker. And then this gate valve here is controlled by a linear actuator, which will allow us to vary the, the rate control. So essentially what we can do now is in the office, we can create a work order on our software package. And we'll say whatever paddock we want to go to, we want to apply this level of fertilizer. And then as we drive along through the, through the, through the field or to the paddock with the tractor, the, um, the tanker will constantly adjust the flow rate to achieve that, to achieve that application rate. Okay, so that's essentially what it can do. So it's, it's, it's quite a large step when you think back from originally maybe upward facing splash plates of many, many moons ago. Yes, and with the software that's in the tractor, if you go into the wrong field or the driver goes into the wrong field. Yeah, as, as, as I said, when we started all of this back five years ago, we, we wanted to make this a, a farm wide uh, move to, this, to the GPS system. So the entire farm was mapped and every paddock has been geofenced. So if we say, for instance, we're standing in paddock 19 here, if we drive the tanker into paddock 20 and try to run that application, the machine won't let you because you're in the wrong paddock okay. and it won't let you spread it. Yeah. Which is important going forward, I suppose, for the RAR staff and farm. Yes, we, we, have, we have approximately 150 different paddocks here on the 250 hectares in lines. So um, paddocks do get subdivided uh, for, trial pro for trial projects each year. So to have that, that, uh, that reassurance is, is, is really, really good, you know? Okay, very good. Yeah. So we might go to the rear of the tank there, so on some, some of the functionality here. Okay, so um, the rear of the tank then, this is, this is Abby's uh, training shoe applicator. Um, essentially, we're using a Vogel Schlang distributor inside the middle here. That's so the story will come out from the, the, uh, the, the, the tanker come down to the distributor and then be spread out to the various trailing shoe um, uh, feet uh, for the application. Um, one of the things we looked for here was uh, that we can put positive pressure on this trailing shoe applicator and that will allow us, um, we feel anyway, get a, a much cleaner uh, sword when we're finished for the application. We do hope to, this will give us a much wider application window when we're applying the slurry onto the, to the various swords. Um, as, as, as grass growth has done. Obviously, in particular this year with the potential increase in bagged fertilizer, we think this will be something we'll be using an awful lot more of. Um, it does come with a splash plate. We hope to take this off and consign that to the shelf yeah. for when we're trading it in. Yeah. Um, that's where we're, where, where we're aiming for. Okay. And again, we can operate across the seven and a half meter spreading width here. Um, we do have auto steer in the tractor as well. So when this, this, the tanker has now been set up on our system with its spread width, and then the auto steer will take care of the tractor going up and down and we'll get, so we'll avoid overlapping and get consistent, accurate placement of the slurry then right. across, the, ac across the field. Right, you went for steering as well, steering axle. We do, we have a steering axle, we have a tandem axle machine here. Um, look, we, 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 as I said, we have a, an, an awful lot of paddocks here, tight gateways, trying to get in and out of, of, uh, of um, of, of various areas and trying to make the machine as, as accessible as possible. We also have to cross quite a narrow bridge as well. So the overall width of the machine 
was something that was that was of concern to us as well. Did you consider getting an NIR sensor on the uh, thing? We, we yes, the machine is what's known as skateboard ready, so we can fit an NIR sensor. At the moment, the budget just hasn't quite allowed us to go from there, but um, we're hoping in the future that's something we can look into. And if we do go for an NIR, rather than just say that we're going to apply a quantity of slurry, we can go down to, we want to apply kilos of nitrogen per hectare on. And again, the software will adjust that as we, as we travel up and down the field. It, it constantly analyzes the slurry as it goes by the NIR sensor. Okay. And Kendrick, can I ask for maybe farmers who are not aware of Isobus, what is the relevance of Isobus for a, for a farmer? For an Isobus, it just allows a, you know, the use of different implants on tractors which are Isobus ready. So you don't have, need a separate screen per implant. You can just plug that implant into the tractor and just run it through the tractor screen. Um, so with the Isobus, again, with all the controls, um, it's all done through the one screen. So you don't need you know, you're down to three hydraulic pipes for the, you know, closed centre load sensing or, you know, two pipes for open centre, but it just means all the hydraulic functionalities are in the screen. So you don't need multiple pipes for all the applications on the, on the machine, on the tanker. You know, you're just down to that three pipes and it's all done through your okay. screen control. And so the GFX 750 is the screen here on this tractor? Yes. Which yeah, we supply. Yeah, we're using the GFX 750, um, which has ice force capabilities. Um, so you know, the tanker's plugged into that screen at the minute. So with that screen, they're running the GPS, even the guidance lines. Um, it is an all guidance ready tractor as well, so the tractor's steering itself. And then also on the same screen, you have your tanker controls. Um, and with the ice bus as well, you can also do section control. Um, like this tanker, it's just a single section of seven and a half meters, but you should do, be able to do the auto switch off and start. Is that something you consider in time, Eddie, or is it relevant at the minute? We, when we had the discussions with the manufacturers, um, we thought that section control in slurry tankers was something that would possibly be in the future, but not yeah. quite now. Yeah, but it's an option, probably in this yeah, time, you're, maybe. You're, yeah, but yeah. It's, it's, I, 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 I let the slurry manufacturers, yeah. or tanker manufacturers, yeah. develop that first, and we'll, we'll look where we go from there. That's fine. Very good. So no, should we might go and see, so say the fertilizers for the next and have a look at that and see what functionality is on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. No problem okay. at all. Thank you.